All right, what's up, everybody? Sam from Zrodar Mimivet. In this video, we're doing my card predictions for FC 277. Pena versus Nunes 2. As always, let's go through the entire picks and uh, the bets, then on to the breakdowns. I don't have, in this moment, the results for a previous card because the time I'm recording this video, it's still a week before the card, so I'm releasing this early on Patreon so that my patrons can take a look at this and... Uh, their bets already, if they agree with me. So the, the results on UFC Fight Night 208 are going to come in the next video, right? And uh, at the end, stick, in, stick into the end if you would wish to hear more on Patreon, how this can benefit you. So between Jocelyn Edwards and Young Kim, I'm picking Edwards and not betting. Drew Dober and Rafael Alves, I'm picking betting Alves. This is my biggest bet of the card. 2.25 units on Alves. Ihor Poteria and Nikolai Nugo Mariano. I'm picking Poteria, but not betting. Dante Mays and Justin Taufa. I'm picking Mays, not betting. Derek Lewis and Sergei Pavlovic. I'm picking and betting Pavlovic. A small bet, 0.7 units. Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunes. I'm picking and betting Nunes. Just parlaying her. Taking a chance there. 0.6, so the smallest bet I have on Nunes. Just parlaying, as I say. Then Alexandre Pantoja and... Alex Perez, I'm picking and betting Pantoja, 0.7. Magomed and Kalaev and Anthony Smith, I'm picking and Kalaev and not betting. Orion Kosi and Mike Matera, I'm picking Kosi and betting him, 0.85. So let's get on to the breakdown, guys. As always, let me know if you agree with this and the fights that you don't agree. Let me know. Let me know why, okay? So between Jocelyn Edwards and Ji Young Kim, so, Kim was supposed to fight um, Agapova here. She was, um, I mean, she was an, an underdog there. I was actually, I, I had already placed a bet in Kim. I was thinking that she was a legit uh, dog in there. I was thinking that she would be able to stuff the takedowns and keep it standing. She has a replacement here in Edwards. I'm not sure whether Edwards was in camp or not. It's, she seemed to be, I was taking a look in her Instagram, probably she was training with uh, Valentina. And, uh, and the crew there, so probably she was in camp, probably she's in shape, right, this uh, this matchup, it's a quite interesting one, Jocelyn, none of them are the best fighters, so it's more lower level matchup, you know, Kim is more of a brawler, she likes to move forward and land heavy, primarily a boxer, doesn't do much rather than that, she has a clinch game, which is okay, but nothing outstanding, Jocelyn Edwards a little bit more well-rounded, like to... She starts well, she comes out aggressive in the first round, but then she slows down, just waits on the outside, and tries to find some shots. I guess this will depend a lot on Kim, whether Kim is going to be able to avoid the bigger shots in round one, going to keep pushing forward. I have my doubts here. Kim, she tends to get hit, right? And then she also doesn't quite keep pushing all the time. So I think... The, this is going to be those fights that you cannot tell who's going to win. I, I agree with being a 50-50 fight. You know, I think Edwards has a little bit more chance, but, you know, when you start really analyzing this one, it's tough to count Edwards into. So I think I agree with the odds, basically, 50-50 fight. I'm going Edwards by decision. I think the most likely scenario, she probably going to be able to control the range better. She also has a little bit more chance to take this to the ground. But I wouldn't be surprised if Kim comes aggressive and clearly wins here, pushes her back, lands cleaner, you know, hits some shots on the way, but does more volume, more damage, basically, you know. So I'm going to be passing on this one. Probably going to be only betting Edwards by decision if I can get hurt plus 200. Drew Dober and Rafael Alves. I told you guys this is my biggest bet of the card. So Alves, so first Dober, Dober, good tight boxer, you know, comes forward, swings heavily, good leg kicks, iron chin, the man can take a shot, as we have seen, and he keeps coming. Also developed a decent wrestling game throughout the years, good double leg, you know, can hold guys down for a bit. But he's at his best still with the Muay Thai. He's fighting Rafael Alves, who is a tank of a man. He's so powerful as a lightweight here. The man comes forward, swings heavily, he can drop anybody in the division. Also, legit BJJ game, very good on the ground. When he comes to the takedowns, he was also very tough to stop because he's so, so explosive and so powerful. So, guys, basically, I have this one as a 50 50. I don't agree with the odds at all here. Dober is coming at minus 300, minus 330. That's why my biggest bet here is on Alves. 
what I expect here, I think Alves actually has more chances to win this fight. That's why I'm picking him within distance. Dober has an iron chin, as I said, but you know, Alves has enough power even to put Dober out or drop Dober and finish him on the ground. And uh, they have basically the same reach here. Alves tends to struggle and guys can stay on the outside and pick him apart and he keeps missing shots. Dober is a good, tech, not a bad Muay Thai fighter, but still he's not perfect, right? He's gonna take his chances, gonna risk, and I think he, he can eat some bombs on the way, right? So again, pick your poison here. I think uh, Alves has more chance to land and to finish this fight, that's what I'm going him. But another very possible scenario is that Alves goes too hard on the first, slows down, then Dober takes over. Right, Dober can uh, you know, keep picking his shots. Even Dober by finish is not impossible, especially late round two or round three. If Alves slows down badly, then Dober takes over and starts landing clean. Also not a not very possible scenario, but like I told you guys, uh, we, we're going Alves here. This is my biggest bet. Orion Kosi and Mike Matera. This fight has, was rescheduled before. This is easy to break down, basically. Matera is a kickboxer. I'm not impressed, to be honest, guys. Not the, the best fighter in there. Fairly slow, in my opinion. You know, he packs some power. He's in a good camp, but I don't know. I, I don't I haven't seen much, to be honest. I'm not impressed. Orion Kosi, we saw he can, you know, go too hard on the first and then slow down a little bit. That's how he lost his fight to Sasha Palotnikov. But I, this is his fight to win, in my opinion. I think he's faster. He's more dangerous, even the feet, right? You can argue that Matera can win on the, the stand-up battle because he has the kickboxing background and all of that. But in an MMA fight, I think I still would maybe favor Orion a little bit on the feet. Plus, there's the takedowns. So probably he's going to make it competitive on the feet, push Mike back and then shoot and then dominate from top. So I think Orion is quite a strong pick here. Right, I'm putting dot eighty-five actually could easily go one unit on, on Kosi here. But uh some of the lines were better in the first uh, when they first uh, opened up in the previous uh, fight before it was rescheduled. Now I think Kosi is like minus one seventy, it's exactly what I have. Still think that one one unit on him might be worth it. And uh, yeah, parlaying him, obviously, so I think quite a strong pick here on Orion Kosi. But, but be careful, obviously, not an experienced fighter or anything, right? So that's why I'm not going too hard to crazy on Kosi, but I do think that he's going to dominate this one. Ihor Potieria and Nick Nugariano. This is an interesting one. I was taking a look on Potieria's record. I think he's 20 and 2, really crazy amount of fights, and uh, 20 and 2 is an impressive record. but. If you watch the guy that he fought, is not high-level guys, and also you can argue that he has a padded record. Nick Nugameriano. I mean, not the best fighter there either. The guy is basically a brawler, comes forward, and sometimes he's patient in there and then waits for his, the right timing, and then he comes forward and basically wins on the feet. Not much rather than that. Actually, he has a quite decent uh, wrestling game. Yeah, he has a more like body lock takedown, so he probably has some background on... On um, how's it called the type of wrestling with the, the upper body there just got a blank on my head there so this is uh, he has decent body lock takedowns and uh, from the top not the best doesn't have much BJJ so can get one or another takedown but doesn't do much with that so basically a brawl on their feet on the feet and then Poteria I mean he's quite well rounded but like I told you guys he's fighting low level competition so it's difficult to tell how he's going to fare, a tough guy. Nugramiano is definitely tough, right? So let's see what's going to happen here. I don't see much uh, skills on Poteria, to be honest. It's a decent double leg. Has submissions from his back, but nothing that he's a BJJ specialist or anything. So still I'm going to be picking Poteria just because he's so much younger. Well, actually, not so much younger than Nick here. So yeah, basically I think he has more potential, can, can has more chances on the ground. Maybe a little bit more chances for the submission. But I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if Nick win this one. Right? In my opinion, dog or pass here. I was tempted to bet Nick. I may, I may do it if the line climbs to plus 170. But as of now, I think I'm just going to pass here. Alexandre Pantoja and Alex Perez. Good fight here, good level. Pantoja comes forward. 
in uh, basically brawling, swinging forward. He's at his best when he pushes guy, guys back and shoot. Excellent. Body lock takedown. He takes guys back while standing, pulls them to the ground with close chokes and very dominant from top. Excellent ground game. Paris, good wrestler. Uh, good chain wrestling, especially with the single leg and uh, also switching, hitting the angle in there. Does a decent, does a very good job with calf kicks, Alex Perez does. And he starts aggressive. So the question here is who's going to be tougher? I think Pantojo is a it's tougher than Perez. Perez got finished by some, you know, by the finish that he had, that he lost against Benavides. I don't know, I don't trust much his chin, to be honest, right? against uh, Figueiredo, he was doing pretty well, but he got sort of wrong move there, giving the guillotine to Figueiredo as well. I think Perez is going to probably start strong, it's going to depend a lot on if Pantoja can check those calf kicks or avoid. If he does, I think he's going to come forward and basically brawl and be the tougher guy, Pantoja, or take it to the ground and dominate there. If Paris takes to the ground, it's dangerous for him. Patoja is better with the BJJ. So I think the, the odds basically are fairly correct, but I think still there's some value on Pantoja. I have a feeling that he's going to finish uh, Paris. So I'm favoring him a little bit. That's why I'm also betting him. But uh, Paris also in a long layoff, so it's quite tough to tell. And Paris, he won against not the best guys, but lost quite quickly to those that are fairly good fighters. So I'm putting that also a little bit into account here. I can't judge much his skills against high-level guys. So yeah, let's see. Let's see what's happening here. Pantoja, I'm mostly parlaying him. Maybe gonna also bet him within distance. Hopefully the price is gonna be interesting there. Dante Omez and Justin Taffa. Actually, was this one in the spreadsheet here? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so this is uh, another one of those fights that's fairly difficult to tell what's gonna happen. Mays, tall guy, likes to stay on the outside, lots of kicks, decent wrestling game, but not the best. Also, his output is not the best, you know, throw some single shots on the outside, and if he can take top position and wear on you, the man is big and, and can just, you know, use his size against you. But Justin Taffa, kickboxer, not the tallest or longest guy, but pretty big heavyweight himself on top of the weight class. Not bad kickboxing, likes to basically move in, setting up some straight shots, good leg kicks, right? He has 100% takedown defense, Tafa has, but nobody with legit wrestling fought against him, so it's tough to tell. Not tough to tell, definitely, that uh, the stats are skewed. I think May is going to be able to take this to the ground, but maybe not to control too much. This Actually, this is the main question here. Can Tough either stuff those takedowns or get back up quickly enough to keep it standing? I think if Tough pushes the pace, he yeah, is arguably the favorite, right? Because May is, I don't trust much his cardio. On the outside, he's obviously not bad, but what, is, what happens if he starts getting pushed back, have to fight the boxing range? I still don't know what's going to happen. I think the odds are favoring me. It's just too much in my opinion. But I also don't want to bet Tafa here because too much one-dimensional. So I think the best here is to pass, but tough one to to pick and to bet in my opinion. Derek Lewis and Sergei Pavlovich. Good fight in the heavyweight division. Lewis, fan favorite. Don't even need to comment much on this guy. Known for the big power, the right hand and... The last bout actually was interesting. He was trying to shoot a lot, which is a great game plan. And I, you know, I said before many times, if Lewis used his wrestling, he would be a legit uh, contender, would be a much better fighter, and he started doing just that. Right? I think he he probably fixed the problems that he had with the, the back pain, all those, this type of things. And then he's fighting now Pavlovich, who is uh, more of a boxer, even though this guy has some sample background, if I'm not mistaken, at least he has legit uh, takedown defense. Now, the main question is, will Derek Lewis be able to impose the wrestling game on Pavlovich? If he can, I think he he is the fa he opened up the favor, I think, for this reason, because he has more chance to take this to the ground and obviously 
has the massive power. But uh, I have a feeling that Pavlovich is going to be the faster guy in there, landing cleaner, right? I'm still not sure if Liu is going to come and keep, and he can push the pace with the wrestling game. His cardio looked pretty good, to be honest, in the last fight, right? So, yeah, it's, it's a tough one to, to predict here. I ended up betting Pavlovich because I got the line early on, was plus 115, but not that I'm too confident on him either, right? Liu is by knockout, always a possibility. I'm going Sergey here, knockout, because he has power, he has a long reach, and Lewis can also be hit and hurt. So yeah, basically I think that's that's it. You know, it's tough to, to tell what's going to happen here. But uh, yeah, I also would be careful in terms of our bets on either side, to be honest, because anything can happen. They can both finish each other. They can go to war but not be able to finish each other. They can both freeze, respecting too much each other. So it's kind of a chaotic fight. But uh, yeah, anything on the plus money thing makes sense in this one. Michael Madden, Kalaev, and Anthony Smith. Good fight on Kalaev uh, coming out as a contender in the light heavyweight division. Super technical. Tall guy, long, right? Very technical. As I said, lots of straight punches, picks his shots. Very tough to hit. Excellent counter wrestling. Decent offensive wrestling. Basically, I don't see much flaws on Kalaev. Just the fact that he could throw just a little bit more in there. Anthony Smith, the Lionheart. Lives up to the nickname, finds his finishes in late, in late rounds, uses his experience and keeps pushing until he wins the fight. Miss has been uh, in the last, let us bout, latest uh, about being able to finish his opponents in the first round, which was interesting. Definitely very little chance for that against Ankalaev. Ankalaev doesn't make mistakes, especially in the first round. You know, Ankalaev has the height to reach here. It's going to be tough for his miss because he's not the most technical boxer, or at least he's going to try to you know, have to push here to get inside and uh, you know, fight against Ankalaev. Plus, Ankalaev has a legit takedown defense. I don't think Smith is a high-level wrestler to take him down. So the odds are showing that Ankalaev actually is a very strong favorite, which is true. But I wouldn't like to bet him in these odds. Maybe parlay him with someone, not a bad idea. I also don't see much chance for Smith. But uh, yeah, it's a lion heart, and you never know, a fighter can come off. Maybe Ankalaev has some problems, some injuries, or not training well for some reason, or even Smith finds a lucky shot. You never know. So at those odds, quite tricky. Not a bad parlay piece on Ankalaev, but I wouldn't uh, throw too much money in there. Brandon Moreno and Kaikara France, another excellent fight, high level here. Moreno, they fought before, Moreno won clearly just by controlling the range, being a little bit more rounded. Tough to see a different outcome here. France has improved a little bit, being more aggressive now. Has Maybe has more power than Moreno, but Moreno has power, so it's not that Kai Kara France is going to just walk him down, eat the shots and continue moving forward. He's going to get finished if he does that. Plus Moreno is a good grappler, developed his wrestling, right? Former champion at this point, cannot question his heart. So it's probably going to be the same. Probably Moreno going to be able to control the range here. Make, mix it up when he needs to. Kaikara Francis still throws much more hooks than straight shots. So it's going to be tough to hit Moreno, to be honest. But um, yeah, I, obviously both of these guys are very experienced. Kai going to try. I think the odds are fairly correct. I was tempted to bet in Moreno here. Or laying him, maybe Moreno by decision, that's what I'm going to do. Because I think France by decision, it's not going to be easy, you know. France by knockout, neither because Moreno has a great chin, as we know. Basically, I think the odds are correct here. I have a feeling that Moreno is not that of a strong favorite, despite what I said. I mean, Kai going to push forward and it's an aggressive fighter coming forward. Never easy to do deal with that. But, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just pass in terms of a bet here or maybe just Moreno by decision. Juliana Payne and Amanda Nunes. So their rematch. Obviously, the, f the first fight was very interesting. So Payne was 71 underdog, right? And uh, Amanda Nunes, 71 favorite. I was thinking that Amanda Nunes would lose at some point. I was just not thinking that it would be to Juliana Payne. That just happened. I mean, I bet... Uh, 
Megan Anderson against Lunes was my biggest bet of the card at the time. I was thinking that, come on, if, if Megan survives the first round, she's going to take over the fight. I would cash big. She got finished in the first. Against Pena, I was thinking, man, the only, re the only way Pena can win is by grinding. I didn't see much of chance happening because I was thinking that Nunes is either going to hit her on the way in or they're going to counter wrestle and finish her on the ground. Nunes starts brawling and hit all those shots. So it's just uh, uh, interesting what things can happen in a fight, right? I think Nunes is going to fix that. Not, much, not too difficult. She's way faster, more athletic, has all the technical skills. So she should dominate this one, but she lost before. And I still haven't seen Pena pushing her hard. I don't trust much Nunes cardio, to be honest. But I think also, again, Juliana Pena is not going to be the one that actually going to make her uh, fight too hard, basically. You know, Because I think Nunes can dominate in terms of the technique, so that not just she's going to have to keep uh, grinding to, to win this one. So I think Nunes is a strong pick here, but again, you know, given the laws, you never know. So I'm just, I'm just parlaying her a little bit, not a big bet, but I do think that she's going to finish uh, paying this one. And this will do for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. So again, this video was first released to patrons. And one of the, this is the first benefit. So you guys have these early releases for 10 bucks. This is in Brazilian rice, but this is $10 a month. So you guys have access, not always, I'm able not always to do this, but when I can, I, I do release early. So guys can parlay, folks can take the best bets, right? So this is right here, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, tier, right? So that's how you guys could uh, profit more by accessing early uh, content and doing parlays over rounds. And for 50 bucks, is the ultimate uh, support for the channel. It's so for 10 bucks, this material is included. I have here my breakdowns, right? In, uh, so you guys can also access this, know what I'm doing. Access to the spreadsheets is also on the 50, right? $50 tier. So you guys know already what I'm doing, included future cards. That's where the updates come. And also the props that I have. So I have props all line by line, all the props that I'm doing, plus the post weightings post that I have. So it's not the entire card here. After the waitings, I will keep posting or keep adding my comments on whichever bets that I'm doing. So such as Ortega and Rodriguez that I put post waitings, I have extra bets that I put. So it's all this content for 10 and for 50, line by line, everything for 10 plus line by line, all the props that I'm having, just to show how this look like. So here are some uh, props that I had uh, in the past. I started making the countings here. So. Some of them, obviously not all the props cash, but when they cash, they cash nicely, right? So this is how it looks like. You guys can take those things and uh, compare to the overall strategy, all right? So I hope you guys again enjoyed this video. Consider supporting the channel and I'll talk to you next time. This is from Zero Dermian Vet, bring the best, most consistent and transparent betting strategy for you.